Gloves here, and today we're going to talk about recording audio in FL Studios via Edison. So in the previous video, I talked about the mixer, recording audio there. Two videos ago, I spoke about just how to record audio using the two basic methods. This is, this is going to be an in-depth, more in-depth video on why you'd use Edison. Uh, I don't use Edison for long stuff, like uh, long pieces of audio, because it takes a lot more memory but Edison offers a couple advantages recording-wise and as an audio editor that's just nice. Now, Pro Tools has a lot of these things just built into the tracks. Most DAWs, you can do some of the things Edison offers right in the track. So I feel like FL is sort of lacking in this area. And so Edison is sort of, I don't feel like it's the best way to deal with the problem. Like, for example, you can't zoom in on a sample level, even if your pulse per quarter note is turned all the way up on, your, on, the, on the track inside your playlist, but you can in Edison. That's so dumb. So let's really quick just talk about this. So Edison's great for recording vocals, loop recording, and for recording via, uh, for recording just audio into there, bouncing audio. Uh, but you can bounce audio just as easily using the mixer. I'm going to do that in a separate tutorial though. So there's two, well, there, I guess there's several ways to open Edison, but there's two legit ways to open Edison. If you hit Control E, it opens Edison. If you record it, it'll record on input. So it's got the different record modes. And its record enable button is separate from the rest of FL. So this record button is completely independent from all the rest. It does land in the insert chain. So if you have something, if you have Edison down here, and let's say you've got like several reverbs and a compressor up there, it will record your effects. If you put it before it and then have all the stuff after, you record a signal dry, and then you'll have it affected after Edison. And that could be really, really useful if you want to record, but you want to track with some effects on, but you want the dry take to mess with later. So that's one reason why Edison might be a good idea. And the mixer, recording in the mixer, you could, you know, just record it here and then route it to another track with your effects then route it to your master but edison just seems a little more simple but again there's problems with the amount of memory it'll come out of sync if you record long chunks of audio in edison so that's just my experience when doing this to picture so all right now let's uh let's say that you've got some audio coming in here let's talk about the other way to open it this is great when you want to configure it and maybe you want to load a sample in there to edit or whatever but if you hit shift e Bang, it opens up the audio logger. I'm not really sure why it's called that, but it is. It's got linked, so it's linked to your playback. So once you have recorded, you can leave it where it's at and it will link it up to wherever you put your playlist head, which is really nifty. Uh, you have the, some features down here that we'll talk about in a second. Well, just one feature that I find annoying because I'm not gonna, this isn't like a tutorial on Edison. And then it sort of is, but it's not like an in depth, like, oh, Edison, I just, just recording. So, and it's ready to record on play. So if I put down some audio, let's say I put this kick down, it's going into channel one. So Edison will record it. And why did it just do that? There we go. And now I'm used to having the pencil tool on, that's why. Okay, so now if we record, actually I wanna show you the loop record function too. I can show you one big sweep. So now if I hit space bar with this in focus, you can see that it is recording. Oh yeah, isn't that just special? Now, whenever I move my playback cursor head, you will see that it moves correspondingly in Edison. You see that red line? Now, I just did a loop record mode. Now, if you were to record the same thing, if we were to turn off, so you wanna turn this off because it slaves it, and then every time you push play, this is gonna trigger, so that could be annoying. So I, I do not like using this. I'd rather just drag the file and edit the file in the playlist than to do that. But uh, another thing about this deal is, um, and they've got these song markers. So what you can do is you can have a loop like we just did or a bigger loop. You just select a loop. Every time it goes back and forth, you will get these little markers and you can simply just grab your slider tool and drag it over to line up the next marker. So if you're doing a vocal take, it's very handy dandy to just do that. And let's say that like, oh, I like this piece of the audio. Hold shift, chop that, and then start sliding the rest till you have a piece of of audio, uh, uh, maybe you're comping a vocal, that sounds really good. That's sort of my workflow approach to something like that. But if uh, if you're not into that type of thing, maybe you want the multi-stacked or layered thing, you can use the, the mixer. However, recording in the mixer is a little sloppy. Uh, I'll show you right now. If we were to record and put it into loop record mode and enable recording, and I think we're solid now. Now we hit record. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I have a, a big chunk here. That is the issue. It chops off the beginnings and ends. It's like, that's a pretty severe issue. I do not know why it does that. So anyways, that's definitely not a good option for loop recording. So you don't want to do that. So that's something Edison's got on it. Plus, I think workflow wise, it's a little bit better. If you want them all on a list though, this could be your thing. However, give yourself some room when it loops at the ends and beginnings. Otherwise, you're going to lose pieces of your phrase. So Edison's also great for it. So if you want to record just small chunks of things and get them out, this is a really excellent way to do it. Something that you can't do in the playlist that I mentioned at the beginning that you can do in Edison and it kind of makes me angry is you can zoom in to the sample level. Now in other DAWs, you can do that in the playlist. And in the way you can now, you people out there who know your who know your junk are gonna be like, you can zoom in far. Look how far that is. And then if you were to hit like F uh, F10 and change your where is it? Project. There it is. And change your thingy to your pulse per quarter notes 960. Look at that. It's so far. Well, that's so great. Yeah, but look at this versus this. That is so much closer. And in other DAWs. Uh, well, specifically Pro Tools I'm thinking of, you can even redraw the waveform like in in here. That's like so cool. It, so Edison, I feel like, is not a great solution for this. They need to upgrade the, the resolution. To, just the fact that you could zoom in farther, that just needs to be a thing. Uh, it's turned down that much because it is a CPU waster. And so I have gotten in the habit of going to Edison, but it's just when I'm in FL, that's just, the, I'm in like, I think in FL mode. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do stuff in FL. So I use Edison and junk. When I'm in Pro Tools, I'm not like, I never feel lacking because I don't have Edison around. I could just reroute crap and do stuff. So it's like, ah, nah, I don't know about this. Via Control A, will select everything, all the basic shortcuts. Now you will notice something. This playback happens separately from this playback. So you... You may consider detaching it by going down here. That way when you switch windows and stuff, it stays on top and you can see it play back. If you slave it, again, it will link to the head. So as we go farther down the line here, it'll go down our files. So if you want to record a vocal in here and then maybe take a section of it and drag that to the playlist, you can totally do that. Uh, another thing about this, is if you hit play in here, but you're zoomed in really far, it's going to do this, which can be really great, I guess, but I personally hate it. Uh, so I turn that off. That's that little arrow down there. It's like auto follow, whatever, auto play. Scrolls to reach playback marker. I, they don't have, an, I guess, a fancy name for it. And this is the slave button. So I'll turn both those things off because generally I don't need it. Um, honestly, it's not that hard to open up Edison as a here and just change it to on play and then hit record so that you're ready to record when you play. Something else to take note of is these things start with a five minutes marker. So you might need to change it to forever or 60 minutes or whatever you need. However, I recommend keeping the five minutes because it's not meant for long pieces of audio. If you look in the manual yourself, you'll see that they even say this takes a lot of freaking memory. Why? Because they give you all these options. They give you all these editing options and ways to just sort of get down in the dirty and make it sound and do whatever you want. You can denoise. You can do all these cool things that uh, you can't do directly from the playlist. You'd have to do it in Edison and then drag it to the playlist. So that's something that like Edison, for example, you, there's not really, I suppose you could gate, but denoising is a little bit different than gating. Well, actually, it's super different. Denoising takes a noise profile and then uses that to phase cancel noise. Whereas gating just is a gate. If you set a signal thing, you just, if you do this, you go, oh, here's Maximus and you take Maximus and then you just, you know, you put a gate down, so the signal has to be this loud to get past your gate. You can do really fancy multi-band gating and junk, but that does not replace, that is a totally different process than denoising. So uh, that's really cool. So those are some features you have available to you. I prefer it mostly for this ability to quickly bounce things uh, through Edison. Um, I also prefer it to get dry takes before affected takes. Normally syncing isn't really that big of a deal. You can scooch things over later, but I'm just telling you if you're gonna be recording long pieces of audio, Edison's probably not the thing for you. Over time, things will get like skewed. I'm not sure if you do it all in Edison that they'll skew the same. Another thing that you can do is you can have an Edison on several tracks 
and you can use a MIDI controller to trigger the record button. So if you want to do that, however, I explain how to use the mixer to do uh, multi-track recording in a way that I think is far more intuitive. Um, I used to not think this, but I recently I learned a couple of things. And I'm like, well, it really is intuitive. So that's that. If you have any questions, let me know. It really is pretty straightforward. You simply click there and you're good to go. Now, as far as the bouncing goes, you can, there is a better way to bounce audio out. Let's say you have a CPU problem, you need to bounce audio. And sometimes you have a hard time getting things to play through Edison without clicking. And I've seen this before. You should just bounce to disk. It's a great way of avoiding it and it's saving yourself processing without having to re-render and hoping that your system doesn't click. And that's by using the... Uh, bounce to disk function inside of the uh, see render to wave files alt r you, uh, via the mixer and that will process it it's really really great so we're going to talk about that one next uh so yeah if you have any questions let me know support me on patreon subscribe and have a blessed day